Hey, fellow tennis nerds. Um, today I'm out in the countryside. I haven't been able to watch all the Wimbledon action that I want to, but uh, it's my son's birthday and we're celebrating. It's not actually his actual birthday, but we're celebrating him out in the countryside. And now they're calling my name. This is uh, how the Volta countryside looks. I'll give you a, a brief uh, look. Um, my um, mother-in-law's partner has a vineyard here so he makes his own red wine a uh, pretty cool place to hang out we do our parties here and i really like coming here because it's quiet and that's always nice in the hustle and bustle uh, of kind of malta where it's like always something happening a lot of traffic a lot of noise a lot of construction a lot of stuff going on but there are many many beautiful parts of malta as well uh, today at wimbledon what what i did see was djokovic being uh, impeccable against kevin anderson i also saw nick Kyrgios Finally, after five sets, uh, beat Hugo Humbar. Curious looked good. He looks like he's ready to fight. I hope we see more of him in this tournament. I know he's a polarizing figure. I do like Nick Curious because I think he brings a lot of ex entertainment, excitement to the game. Sometimes it can be too much uh, streaming, too much video games, too much anger tantrums and a little bit of, of childish behavior. But I think he compensates pretty well with his game and his game style. Um, so... Uh, really happy to have seen that uh, Novak was too good. A lot of other good matches that I will talk about uh, a little bit later on today. Uh, a lot of nice five setters uh, and um, and great tennis. So Wimbledon is really here and really interesting. So a pretty chill place to hang out. Uh, great idea to come here if you're tired of the kind of city life where there is some city life in Malta, and this is a great place to just kind of rewind, uh, recharge your batteries have a drink, we did some barbecue, uh, and uh, yeah, just enjoy family time, which we all need uh, from time to time. And uh, I will catch up with more tennis uh, as soon as I, I get back home. And uh, we'll look into all the action that happened today and hopefully be able to summarize it and uh, give you a good idea of what happened and what I think about it. Seems like some of you enjoy these videos. I really enjoy making them, so I'll keep making them for now. And uh, we'll also come back with more uh, racket shoes and other stuff, of course. I uh, got some exciting content coming up very, very shortly. Hey, fellow tennis nerds, it's that time of the day again. I uh, just got home and uh, been catching up with the tennis. Andy Murray is still in action, still fighting hard. He's done one... Uh, is down by two sets to one to Oscar Otte, which is a little bit of a surprise. But then again, Andy Murray hasn't played a lot of matches. He just had a nasty fall. We'll see what happens. Um, I have a feeling he might turn this around because he's Andy Murray, but who knows? It's it's gonna be a tough fight back. Uh, he managed to hold serve. Uh, Oscar Otte seems to be a quite uh, angry guy where he has some, uh, some uh, strong feelings on the court. That can be a good thing, that can be a bad thing. We'll see how this unfolds and how his career unfolds. Uh, so 2-1 to Murray at currently in soon out of date tennis news. And uh, if we look at the other matches of the day, Djokovic was spectacular. As I said, he beat Kevin Anderson pretty easily. It was very convincing throughout. Um, Kyrgios, five sets win against Umbar. If he gets going, he can be very dangerous. Dan Evans is a guy you should also watch out for on grass. He beat Lajovic straight sets, very convincing. Dan Evans has that game that should work well on the surface with the slice, low skidding slice, aggressive tennis, a kind of multifaceted player that likes to be at the net. Another Brit also did well today. Cam Norrie, has, have, he's having the best season of his life. Beat Puy. Puy has had struggled uh, over the last couple of years with his form and uh, well, it's a good sign that he's playing Wimbledon, but but yeah, it's a first round loss again. Berrettini beat Peya, I said as much, but he did lose the second set, but but he was the clearly the better player. It's a sign of strength, I think, that he won that easily. Oger Aliasim against Monteiro, straight sets. Oger Aliasim will be tough, so keep an eye out uh, what, for him. Dimitro was nice to see. I talked about his new racket, which is likely an H22 with an 18-20 string pattern, but I conf can't confirm anything yet. Uh, he beat Verdasco, lost first set, but then came back, looked to be in really good shape. This was a very good match. And uh, Dimitro should also be one to watch and it would be fun to see him make a run. Super nice guy from what I've heard. As I said, there was an upset on, upset on the cards with Jordan Thompson versus Casper Ruud. Thompson won the first two sets in two super tight tie breaks. Then Rude came back, 6-2, 6-2, two sets he, he took there pretty easily. 
but he lost and in the fifth set. So an upset to Thompson. I was a bit question. I did question how good Rude will be on grass, uh, and uh, I thought this could be an upset, and it it seemed to be that way as well. Monfils, as I said yesterday in my recap, he got got it there in the end. Five sets beat O'Connell. Very tight match. Six four in the fifth. Uh, it was an upset possibility there, as it seems to be these days with with Monfils, but. He did manage in the end. Another big upset. Didn't see this coming. And this is something I have to talk about in this video a bit more because what's going on with the grass? The grass just seems very slippery this year. A lot of moisture, a lot of, of players slipping and hurting themselves and a lot of upsets. So it seems to play slower. And there was like some complaints from what I've heard. They did issue some kind of, of press release about the, the grass situation. And there are some results that really make your eyebrows go oop. Because uh, Nishioka today, the quite short uh, Japanese player, beat Isner in five sets. And that was must, I didn't see this match. I can talk about it in, in depth. And he won 6-4 in the fifth, but very impressive, obviously. But it seems like the, the courts must be slower for this result to even be a possibility. So something is going on with the grass, it seems like. So I just wanted to touch uh, a bit base uh, on the topic of the grass courts. Are they more slippery than normal? Uh, it's been written about a lot in different media. Federer said this, I don't think it plays very different this year. Uh, but those first two matches are always extremely difficult, he said. It's always been like this. I feel a lot for the players. It's super key to get through those first two rounds because the grass is more slippery. It's more soft. As the tournament progresses, usually the court gets harder and easier to move on. I think he has a good point there. Grass is a surface that requires movement, uh, as specific movement, as players to stay lower on the ground than usual, taking extra care of their ankles in particular, because there is some, some slippage for sure. Um, and the intermittent rain of the first two days of Wimbledon did not help. Uh, when it's hot and dry, it's gonna dry faster, and when it's damp like this, it takes longer to dry. So it's been the wettest they have experienced in almost a decade, explaining some of the, of the surface. It has required the roof to be closed on center court and court number one for long periods, which is rare. This is at a time when the grass plant is at its most lush and green, which does result in additional moisture on what it is, what is the natural surface. That's what the All England Club said in a statement. So it's obvious that we're, we're facing a bit slightly different conditions, more challenging conditions, especially lo looking at injuries and movement for the players. Uh, so that's good to keep in mind. There's no, the grass is the same. They pay so much attention to the grass and, and they can only do so much about uh, force majeure and nature conditions. That's, that's just life. And it's, it's rough when you see players get injured, uh, but uh, as Andre Murray said, the, the, the center court is extremely slippery and that's just uh, a fact of, of life now. It's just nature. Let's see um, if it gets better now after a few days when they've moved enough on the grass. It's gotten a bit harder. Temperatures are going up a bit and we're not seeing the same amount of rain. So Rublev looks super solid. How far can he go? Seems to be playing really well at the moment. Straight sets win against Lloyd Harris. Uh, was pretty impressive. Kudla in good shape, beat Seppi in straight sets, didn't see that coming. Francis Tiafo, he kept up his good form, uh, looks to be in great shape for this tournament, uh, really enjoying it, and uh, he beat Pospisil in straight sets 6-4, 6-4, 6-4. So uh, he should also be a guy you should keep your eyes on because he can actually go through the draw. Um, Public one, as I said uh, in my predictions, I was pretty sure about that one. Mute, I don't know what happened to him, but he lost in straight sets against Bedene. Did not see that coming at all. Uh, so that's a bit surprising. Hachano, he won, which I predicted. Fuxo, which won as well, but due to a retirement from Vesely. Rusovori, he lost to Giron in a five set match. I thought Rusovori would win. Giron is, is, these are two typical baseline players. So I, I have a feeling that the, the grass is playing very slow this year. It seems not to, to benefit the, the players who like to attack a bit more. Um, Funini, he won as well against Las Loggere. That was pretty predictable. Steve Johnson won, also predicted that one. Another upset that I was really surprised to see, uh, Karatsev lost in, straight sets to Chardy. I don't know how that happened to be honest, but there was two there were two really tight tiebreak sets and then Chardy won the last one 6-3. So a surprising result. Karatsev's worst result 
of the year so far. Sam Querrey, he took out Karen Yubusta. Oh, it was pretty easy to predict that one. Nishikori beat Popperin quite easily, so Nishikori looks to be in good shape. Sadly, Pablo Andujar had to retire, and there's been some retirements so far that puts a little bit of a damper on the on the mood. Sebastian Corda, he beat Hong. Uh, very impressive. Two straight set wins for Corda. Uh, he looks to be in great shape. So what do we have on tomorrow? Uh, we have a very good match. Uh, number three on the center court. Certain Federer is playing Gasquet. They played many, many times before. Gasquet has had pretty poor results. Sometimes he can kind of impress us and, and uh, he surprise us a little bit. But if Federer is playing anywhere close to his best, he should be okay. But the, the, what we saw in the first match was not very convincing. So this, it's very hard to predict. I think Federer will win this in the end, but I think he might lose a set. Uh, and I wouldn't be 100% surprised if Gasquet wins because Federer did not look 100% ready for this tournament in the first match. But the first round is the first round. You never know 100% what's going to happen based on that. Uh, Alex Bolt is playing Cam Norrie on court number one. And uh, yeah, he should be the favorite. He's great form, fighter, maximizer of his talent. Uh, yeah, should do good things this year. So he should beat Bolt pretty confidently. Interesting matchup for you who want to follow the next gen, next gen. The Carlos Alcaraz is playing against Medvedev. And Medvedev was pretty great against Struff in a very tough match and looks to be in, in good form on the grass. So I think Medvedev will win that match, but he should be tested a little bit. Maybe he will lose a set. Maybe something like that could be interesting to follow. If we look at other matches that are settled in the draw, we have Djokovic Kudla coming up in the third round. It's all about Djokovic there. In the second round, we have Monfils Martinez. Very tough to predict. I think Monfils should get going now. Schwartzman Fuksovic, that's an interesting matchup. Uh, I think that's going to go down the wire, five sets. Uh, I'll predict that Schwartzman might win it because he's a good five set player, clutch player. One of the better matches in round three. Fognini Rublev and that should be a great one and uh, really looking forward to that. I hope Fognini can bring his A game to really challenge Rublev because Rublev looks to be in great form. So this is going to be a tough one. My prediction will go to Rublev anyway. Francis Tiafo Kachano also excellent third round match. Uh, Tiafo is my pick. I really think he's bringing the goods this year. Another excellent one. Evans Korda. Korda is, is in top form. Evan seems to be in great form as well. Should be a nail biter. Uh, tough match. Interesting uh, contrast of styles. Evans playing more aggressive, more slice, and, and Corda being super solid from the baseline. Aggressive there. It's it's gonna be a good matchup that one, I think. Evans Corda. Shapovalov is gonna play whoever wins from Oscar Otte and Murray. So uh, he's waiting, keenly awaiting that result. So we'll have to see. What happens? Um, uh, some second round matchups. Berrettini van der Sandschulp should be an easy match for Berrettini. Bedene Nishioka toss up. I, I, it's not even a point to predict. Uh, Nishioka might be tired from the match against um, John Isner and Bedene won in straight sets. A bit surprisingly, I would pick Bedene for that one. Shardi Varshka is a very tough match to predict as well. Nishikori Thompson, that's Nishikori written all over it. Ojer Aliasim versus Ymer. I think uh, Aliasim is in, in great form. Ymer is tough from the baseline, but shouldn't be, uh, grass shouldn't be his best surface. My prediction goes to Aliasim pretty confidently. Um, sorry about the pling. We have Kyrgios Mager. I think Kyrgios, but Mager is a tough opponent. But curious, uh, I think he's, he's ready to make a run. So we'll look, look out for him. Fritz Johnson, that's that's a tough one. Taylor Fritz is my pick. Tennis Anger and Zverev, I think Zverev can actually be a force in this tournament. So I'm going Zverev in four. A uh, good one, as a kind of a popcorn match for sure. In, in styles is Bublik versus Dimitro. And uh, yeah, that could be... Could go either way, could be a five sets, and could be a straight sets win to someone. I think uh, I'll pick Dimitro for that one. All right, it's a long, a long run through of all the matches coming up, uh, doing my best to cover this in a short amount of time as possible. But since play is a little bit scattered and it's been all over the place generally, it's been quite tough. I hope you enjoy these recaps about Wimbledon 2021. If you want to see them in the future for other tournaments, please let me know in the comments below. 
might not have the same audience as the tennis racket stuff, but I'll do that as well. So this is not cannibalizing on anything. It's just an addition. So I hope you find it uh, interesting and uh, useful. That's all. Have a nice day. And don't forget to play and watch sometimes.